It's the dictionary. 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 Hello, word nerds. Hello, word nerds. You're gonna listen and watch my podcast, The Dictionary. I'm Spencer. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to The Dictionary. Why is this sounding louder than normal? I don't know. Who cares? Uh, please go rate and review this show. Um, it would be it would make me feel so good to to read some reviews. I don't care what stars they are. I mean, obviously, I want the five stars, but, you know, just the fact that you listened and you took the time to write something, it would make my heart explode. And, of course, I'll, I'll read it, and I will probably read it on an episode when I get it. It would be so wonderful. Uh, if you are enjoying this show, uh, which is a whole bunch of education, but also maybe a little bit of entertainment and also a little bit of movie talk... Uh, please uh, follow me on the social media. Make sure to follow this show on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast platform you like. But also, it's on my YouTube page. You can see visuals of all of this stuff. And make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get the notifications and all those fun things. Um, so if you're liking the show, go ahead and, uh, feel free to email me if you have your own little theme song that you would like to send to me, real short, 15 seconds, go ahead and email that to me, dictionarypod at gmail.com. Uh, you can also email me a joke if you come up with a joke for any word through now to the end of the alphabet. Email me the joke. I'll say your joke when I get there. It's gotta be the email though. Uh, you can follow me on social media at DictionaryPod on a few places, you know, the sort of big standard places. And uh, if you want to, you can DM me, you can comment, you can tag me on stuff. Those are all just fantastic, wonderful things that you can do as well. You can leave me a voicemail on the Google Voice line, 917-727-5757. Leave a message and um, I will put it in an episode unless you tell me not to. You have to opt out of that situation. Um, if you want to buy merchandise, if you love this show so much, you want to buy physical products in the real world that show your love for this show, you can do that at the Tee Public link in the show notes. Um, you can join the Patreon for $1 a month. Um, that gets you very early episodes, early audio, early video. If there are exclusives, which I haven't done for a while, but there are some past exclusives, you will get those as well. Um, okay, I think that's fine. I think that's all the important things to say today. So let's read the words. Our first word in this episode is entree. E-N-T-R-E-E. -E -E. Um... It looks like entree, but it is uh, pronounced entree. Um, oh, it looks like you can all, oh, oh, um, you can emphasize either syllable. Entree, entree. You can spell it um, with an accent on the middle E. That's the E that's the second to the last. That accent goes boop, down on the left, up on the right. You can spell it with the accent or no. Noun from 17. 25, 1A, the act or manner of entering. The synonym is entrance. So if you're just walking into a room, you're doing an entree. This is my entree into the room. Hi, everybody. Here's my entree. Uh, 1B, freedom of entry or access. If you have freedom to enter another country, you have entree into that country. I think that's what it means. Number two, the main course of a meal in the U.S. And I don't understand why we call this meal the entree. Um, so let's say you got a you got an eight course meal, and you've got uh, what do you got? What do you got? You got hors d'oeuvres and a soup and a salad and a dessert and one of in somewhere in there is the entree it's the most substantial biggest of the meals um 
you know, not everybody has uh, courses. They don't always have like a soup or a salad or some little snacky thing before the entree. Um, uh, so you you can still call it an entree, I guess, but it's just your one meal. You know, when we go out to dinner, sometimes, sometimes we'll get an appetizer um, and then the entree would be the more substantial, but sometimes we just get the entree. Um, so... I, I guess if it's just the one course, it's still called the entree, even though it's the only course. It's the main course, but it's the only course. But why? Why, why, why? Um, I think I'm going to need to look this up because uh, the, it's this French word, entree. Uh, it, there's more at the word entry. So I don't really understand why we're using this word for food. It's not your entry into the food. The entry into the food would be maybe the hors d'oeuvre or the salad or something. So this doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm very, and now angry, at the English language. Entree. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, I think I'll put a link in the show notes. Okay, my sound effect today is going to be... The next word is... Uh, entremet. Entremet. Or, I guess the plural would be entremets, but it is spelled E-N-T-R-E-M-E-T-S, which looks plural. Uh, it says when it is singular, it's entreme. When it's plural, it's entremets. It's a noun, plural, but singular or plural in construction. So I guess maybe you still spell it the same way with the S at the end, but maybe when you're when you're talking about it singularly, you just say entreme, but when you're talking about it plurally, you say entremets. Okay, it is from the 15th century. This is dishes served in addition to the main course of a meal, but especially the synonym dessert, the most important of the courses. The, the entree is the main course, but the entremets is the best most important course. I have never heard of this one. Let's see. The etymology says this is from uh, Old French. Um, entree, which means between. Now, I would have thought it would be like the beginning, entering into. But it means in between. And we did see something recently. Oh, entract. That's in between the acts. That was in the, uh, the previous episode. Uh, so entree means in between, and then maize, I don't know how you would say it, may, M-E-S, means food or dish. So it's between food, between dishes, but a dessert I don't think is in between the courses, it's at the end of the course. Um, it just says it's dishes served in addition to the main course of a meal, so it could be before the entree, which is the main course, it could be after, uh, so... It, a whole a whole lot of things could be called entremets, and that's very confusing. And why have I never heard this before? That makes me sad. I'm so sad because I've never heard of entremets. Next is entrench. Uh, you could also spell it with an I at the beginning. This is a verb from 1548, starting with transitive, 1A, to place within or surround with a trench, uh, especially for defense. So, in trench, you're putting something in a trench to, def to, to be able to defend it, defend, to, for it to defend something, um, or you're surrounding it with a trench, uh, and yeah, you know, we look at uh, we look at old old movies or old footage of old wars, and they're digging trenches, they're making trenches, they're fighting in the trenches. Uh, 1917, that recent movie is the first one that I think of because that was a real standout film recently. And uh, yeah, there's there's a whole lot of trenches in that movie. Um, so you, if you're, so you would be entrenching yourself, entrenching something into a trench. 1B, to place in a strong defensive position, and you are doing this to yourself. Now, you are not literally putting yourself in a trench, 
but you are putting yourself into a position where you can be defensive. Maybe you are uh, up in a um, up in a building. Maybe you're a sniper uh, at uh, on the top of a building. Atop a building, you are sniping, and so you would have entrenched yourself at the top of the building. One C to establish solidly, as in entrenched themselves in the business. They've put themselves very solidly into this business. They're not ever leaving. They've been there for 50 years, and they love working at this business so much. They are fully entrenched. Number two, to cut into, and the synonym is furrow, but specifically to erode downward so as to form a trench. Now, this seems like this would be maybe water entrenching into rock, possibly cutting into the rock over all of those thousands and thousands of years. That's how we got the Grand Canyon. Um, it's furrowing, it's making a furrow. Um, and yes, eroding downward and it's forming a trench. That's what it is. The water is entrenching the rock. The water is entrenching the rock, yeah. Um, when I do this with my eyebrows, fur uh, can I furrow my eyebrows? Maybe not. Mm, yeah, maybe that's more of a furrow. I furrow, 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 furrow. Okay, now we have intransitive. One, to dig or occupy a trench for defensive purposes. So you're not putting anything into the trench. You are creating the trench. That's what it is. I guess you are occupying a trench. Now, I don't really know how this one's different from the first one. The very first definition for transitive. You're still putting it, putting something in to, I am entrenching the trench. I'm occupying the trench. Trench, trench, trench. Number two, to enter upon or take over something unfairly, improperly, or unlawfully. And the synonym is encroach. Uh, this is used with the words on or upon. So you can entrench upon a thing uh, because you are you're taking over you're taking it over. You go into a town and you burn it down and you're like, hey, I'm the mayor now, then you would have entrenched that town because you're taking it over uh, unlawfully, improperly, unfairly, and it's just mean. Don't do this, please. Yeah, encroach. I'm encroaching on your business, and then I'm going to entrench myself in that business. Um, entrenchment is a noun. Now, there's no etymology because I think it is pretty obvious. If you have listened to the last many episodes, you can tell where this word comes from. Next is entrepot. Entrepot. E-N-T-R-E-P-O-T, -E and the O has the, now I don't remember the name of this, but it has the hat accent, the carrot accent, whatever it's called, that's sitting on top of the O, it looks like that, sitting on top of the head, like that, but it's just with the two fingers, not the other fingers, I can't do that with my hand. Entrepot is a noun from 1758. An intermediary center of trade and transshipment. Transshipment. Intermediary, intermediary center of trade. And so there's there's things going across the world. They're being sent. They're, they're going from this country to that country all over the world. They're being sent by planes and ships and trains and other ships and boats and things. And so, but they got to... If, you, if they got to stop over in a place before they're going to their final destination, maybe this would be an entrepot because it's intermediary. It's in between the two places. Um, this word is from French, Middle French, entreposer, which means to put between. Um, yep, that's from entre, which means inter, plus poser, which means to pose or put, putting in the middle of something is the entrepot. So uh, yeah, uh, so if you're if you're shipping something from one part of the world to the other and it's got to stop over, if you ship me something from New Zealand, it's gonna probably stop over in 
um, maybe LA, maybe Seattle, because I'm in Chicago, I'm in that area, and so it's probably going to stop over in one of those western cities, and that would be the Entrepot. Oh, good. Next we have Entrepreneur. Now, entre, now you can you can emphasize the R entrepreneur, preneur, preneur. How do you want to say this word? Entrepreneur, 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 entrepreneur. Anyway, it is spelled E N T R E P R E N E U R. This is a noun from 1852. One who organizes, manages, and assumes the risks of a business or enterprise. Hmm, that's not exactly what I would have thought that it would have said. Um, one who or so I always think of an entrepreneur as somebody who um, is starting up a business. They're not necessarily established as a business person, or this at least in this specific business. Um, and they also, they maybe tend to like, like to start multiple businesses, but specifically they organize a business or enterprise, they manage the business and they also take on the risk. So they're sort of the one in charge of this new business. They're doing all these things to this business or enterprise, a word we had recently. Um, entrepreneurial is an adjective entrepreneurialism <laughs> that's a word uh, that's a noun entrepreneurialism hmm. entrepreneurially <laughs> that's an adverb entrepreneurially preneurially. and entrepreneurship that is a noun I don't know how often any of those words get used probably not that often entrepreneurially yeah um, let's look at the etymology for this word. I think we're starting to get a little bit of knowledge of how these words are built. Um, well, it is from Old French, entrepre, entreprendre, entreprendre? That means to undertake. So yes, entrepreneurs are undertaking a, a big task to start a business, start a thing. Uh, there's more at the word enterprise. So that's, that's literally all it is. I was hoping that it would have broken down the word a little bit more. Entreprendre. Uh, maybe I'll put a link in the show notes for more etymology of entrepreneur because I feel like there's a bit more that we're not getting. How, how did they create this word entreprendre, which is spelled E-N-T-R-E-P-R-E-N-D-R-E. -E -E. Entreprendre. That's not how it's said. Next is entresol or entresol. E-N-T-R-E-S-O-L. Uh, this is a noun from 1711, and the synonym is mezzanine. So I think of that as being one of the balconies in a theater. Uh, and I guess it's also called entresol. Why? Let's look at the etymology. Uh, this is from, well, it's French, but it's from Spanish. Um, entresuelo, entresuelo, which is from entre, which means between, plus suelo, which means ground or floor. So now, but it's not in between the floors, really. There's not like the floor here and a floor here, but it kind of is because if it's like the floor is here and then you got a balcony, a mezzanine here, and then you got another balcony up there, then this one, this middle one, you can obviously see me because you're clearly watching the YouTube, uh, this, this middle one would be in between the first floor and the top balcony, and so it's entresol, entresuelo, in between the floors. It makes sense when you talk about it that way, but I've never heard this word. I have heard mezzanine. I have heard mezzanine. I have not heard of entresol. I'm very glad to know it. Glad to know you, entresol. I don't know what this sound is. I know what it is, but I don't know what it is. Next we have entropion. 
yes, entropion or entropion, spelled E N T R O. Now we finished our E N T R E words. Now we're on E N T R O, and then you have the letters P I O N. I had to look very closely to confirm that that was an I. On an entropion. This word is a noun from circa 1860. The inversion or turning inward of the border of the eyelid against the eyeball. Oh, God. Wait. Hold on. Hold, just, just wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got to read this again. The inversion or turning inward of the border of the eyelid against the eyeball. Now, when I was a kid, there were other kids who would do this thing, which I think I just saw in a movie recently, where they would flip their eyelid, they would invert it, and so the inside of the eyelid was pointed outwards, and it looked very weird. It's very disturbing to see this, and I think I maybe tried it a couple of times, but I have issues with touching the eyes. I can't even do drops so good. And so I couldn't, I couldn't do this. Now, I don't totally understand if that's what this is. Entropion. It seems like it might be different. Let's look at the etymology. Let's, let's discuss this. Let's look at this. This is from, it's New Latin from N, um, which is the second form of the prefix N plus ecto, no, ectropion. And we, we, we're not using the E-C there, ectropion. We're using the rest of the word, which means turning out of the eyelid. So you take the word that means turning out of the eyelid, and then you're putting the N prefix, which I feel like we should... What's the second form of N? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, N prefix here, uh, it means in or within. That's kind of what I would have thought. So, the, the inversion or turning inward, inward of the eye, uh, of the border of the eye. Okay, so I think this is actually opposite from what I thought it was. I think instead of flipping the eyelid this way, so the eyelid is sticking out, you're actually taking the, the, uh, the underside of the eyelid, the part that meets the other part of the eyelid, and you're pushing that inside inside is this a thing like does this happen i don't think i've ever done this like if i guess if you've got maybe really dry eyes and you'd i don't know close your eyes open your eyes your the inside the border of your eyelid could be flipped inside is that what it is spencer are you gonna look up and a picture of entropion and so you can tell people what what this is and if they should look this up as well why did i do this these are not pictures that i want to see yeah okay it looks like it looks like this is mostly now i'm seeing a couple of different things here it looks like it's mostly the bottom eyelid and i guess as people get older um maybe um the you know the maybe the muscles the skin as they start start to get old and saggy and not as strong and it sort of just flips inside. The The bottom eyelid goes sort of in. Now, I'm also seeing pictures of where you do this, where you pull down the eyelid like it's so saggy it's pulling down. But that seems different than what this definition is saying. And I, I think I'm done looking at these pictures. I don't think that that's something that I want to look at anymore. So, yes, it does seem like it's more the bottom eyelid. Um and I maybe maybe when I get older I will have some entropion. Maybe you will too. We can be entropion twins together. Okay, enough of this eyeball thing. Next we have entropy. E n t r o p y noun from 1875. Um, now, we only have, it looks like, four definitions, but the first one is very long. So, let's read that first, because that's how I do things. I don't read them out of order. Okay, entropy, number one. Whew! A measure 
of the unavailable energy in a closed thermodynamic system that is also usually considered to be a measure of the system's disorder that is a property of the system state and that varies directly with any reversible change in heat in the system and inversely with the temperature of the system. Broadly, the degree of disorder or uncertainty in a system. I don't know what any of that was. Um, I'm going to read it again in one breath and quickly, probably. A measure of the unavailable energy in a closed thermodynamic system that is usually also usually considered to be a measure of the system's disorder that is a property of the system state and that varies directly with any reversible change in heat in the system and inversely with the temperature of the system, broadly the degree of disorder or uncertainty in a system. The, the, what I understand entropy is, is, is chaos, is there's a lot of stuff happening, these thermodynamics, it's all crazy and wibbly-wobbly, and that's how I describe entropy as when I'm describing that to people. Um, definitely going to put a link in the show notes for entropy because I think this is an interesting thing to learn about um, because it's all over the universe. Everything, there, there's entropy. Like, I think, if I'm understanding correctly, you know, in my tea mug here, there's heat and the, the little particles are bouncing around uh, they're very uh, charged and they're very, um, maybe that's not the right word, they're very excited and so that's why they're warm or hot. Um, and so I think that there would be more entropy in a situation like that. It's a measure of the unavailable energy in a closed thermodynamic system, uh, a system that has temperature, uh, maybe hot temperature, and it's dynamic but it's the unavailable energy. So you can't access this energy. It's usually considered to be a measure of the system's disorder. Yes, there's a lot, there's no order in this situation. It's not static, it's dynamic. Um, uh, that is a property of the system's state uh, and that varies directly with any reversible change in heat to the system in the system and inversely with the temperature of this yeah it's a little bit smart for my brain apologies i can't describe it any better than that but i hope it's a start for you if you are curious about entropy which i think you should be you should go learn about entropy okay well what else does entropy have to say 2a the degradation of the matter and energy in the universe to an ultimate state of inert uniformity so i think this is the idea that there was the big bang and it exploded and everything has been shooting out from the big bang and expanding and planets and stars are created and moons and but we are we're we're it's all it's all expanding it's all getting further and further away from each other and it's degrading you know, eventually all these things are going to die. The stars are going to die. They'll use up all their energy. And uh, the degradation of the matter and energy in the universe. So ultimately, it's going to get into a state of everything is so far away from each other. It's all cold. It's all just sitting there dead. And then the universe will be in a state of entropy. Is that what it's saying? Um, that sort of seems like where it's going. But there's also thoughts that it's going to the universe is going to collapse back on itself and then would that still be i don't really understand how entropy plays into that is is entropy done at that point why didn't i have a scientist on for this episode but it is a fascinating thing to think about and talk about to be a process of degradation or running down or a trend to disorder the process of degradation to disorder or a trend to disorder, a running down to disorder. And so that's what it is. We're, maybe we're all in a state of entropy because we're all degrading. Once we're born, we start degrading until we're dead. 
and then so we're we're constantly in a state of entropy uh until until we're dead that's it that's a way well, I, I am entropy you are entropy everything is entropy eventually all this will be gone and that's it who cares who cares number three the synonym uh we have we have three synonyms actually chaos disorganization and randomness and this is my brain entropic or entropic that's an adjective entropically or maybe entropically that is an adverb it would be done entropically um the universe is being is living entropically eventually it will not be living maybe uh this word is from the n prefix which means within plus the greek word tropi i don't know how they said that which means change or literally turn um yeah literally turn uh that is from trepping which means to turn so maybe turning into something else not turning around spinning 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 until we're dizzy turning into something else changing but it's all within so it's the inside of a thing changing becoming something else that's entropy fascinating topic i suggest that you go read up on it i probably won't but you should uh and yes my sound effect is it's like it's like entropy next is entrust um spelled with an e or an i this is a transitive verb from 1593 one to confer a trust on especially to deliver something in trust to to deliver something in trust to um you are trusting somebody with you give i'm going to give you this dirty old napkin i'm entrusting this to you with my life with its life this is a very important piece of garbage i'm entrusting it to you to hold on to it forever and ever and ever please please number two for entrust to commit to another with confidence so you are i, I don't know what this be like you, you're marrying somebody you're committing yourself to this other person with confidence you are very confident that they are a good match for you that you want to spend many 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 years together entrusting to commit to another um it could also it doesn't have to be marriage obviously uh any sort of partnership maybe a business partnership maybe a podcast partnership you know one of those podcast partnerships yeah a uh, synonym is the word commit so you are you're committed you are feel very strongly that this is an important thing to do so you are committed you are entrusting entrustment is a noun and here we go with our last word. It's the word entry, E-N-T-R-Y. Noun from the 13th century. One, the right or privilege of entering. And we saw this with the word entree at the beginning of this episode. We got, we got bookends here. The right or privilege of entering. The synonym is entree. Which, uh, did we see this? No, we didn't see that there. Interesting. Uh, well, it does say more at the word entry, which is what we're reading now. Number two, the act of entering. The synonym is entrance. And yes, I think that was pretty similar. Yeah, entree said the act or manner of entering. The synonym was entrance. Three for entry. A place of entrance as 3a the synonyms are vestibule and passage vestibule 3b the synonyms are door and gate so those are all places of entrance you go through a gate maybe there's a gate in the lawn you open the gate and then you get to the door you open the door and then you get to a little area that we call the vestibule. I'm hanging out in the vestibule. I'm trapped in the vestibule. And then you get out of the vestibule, maybe through another door. And then you walk down a hallway, and that is a passage. Those are all four entries. Number 4A, the act of making 
or entering a record. So I think this is like a, a record of maybe the hotel, the hotel detective staying at the hotel. Um, you got you're entering them into the record. Uh, that's an entry. The the each one of those. I wanted to use the word in my example. Each one of those people who who enter the hotel, those are all entries. All of those entries in the record. 4B, something entered as, oh boy, we have five of them, five sub-definitions. Something entered as 4B1, a record or notation of an occurrence, transaction, or proceeding. So like your bank statement, your credit card statement, there's lots and lots of entries of money going in, money going out. Those are all entries. Something else that's entered is 4B2, a descriptive record as in a card catalog or an index. A descriptive record. It's just another entry. These are all very similar, I think. 4B3, the synonym is head word, which I have never seen this word, head word. Um, what, what is head word? I'm, I just want to get a little, hmm, a word that begins a separate entry in a dictionary or other reference work. Um, so which one of those would be, would it be the word at the top of the page where it says the, the beginning, what's the word at the beginning of the page? I, I need to know this now. A word that begins a separate entry in a dictionary or other reference work. So would it be I, would each of these words be an entry? I guess so. That would that would make sense. You know, so this word entry is an entry in the dictionary. The previous word was, what was it? Entrust. That was the previous entry. Yeah. Um, four, four before, I lost my paperclip. I got my paperclip. Hello, paperclip. Uh, four before is a head word with its definition or identification. So not just the word itself, but all of the, maybe the information, all the definition that I'm reading here is all part of the same entry. 4B5, this synonym is vocabulary entry. Not sure how that's, what that is exactly, but it's an entry. And number five, a person, thing, or group entered into something as a contest or market. Uh, we had, what did we have in, um, on, on entrant, 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 I think, yes, somebody entering a contest. So they are also an entry in the contest. As in, the latest entries in the computer market. Ooh, what are the new things in the computer market? Does it have two gigs of, two megabytes of RAM? That's a cool computer entry. Also, judge the entries in the writing contest. Everybody has entered their writing into the contest. They are entrants and they are very specific entries. Okay, well that was all of that stuff. Um, the etymology, um, it's basically from the Anglo-French word entrer, which it means to enter from the verb entrer, which means to enter. That's what this is all about, entering entering into a thing. Okay. I'm going to read you the words and then I'm gonna pick a word of the episode. We had entree. Entreme or entremes in trench. Entrepot. Is that entrepot? Entrepreneur. Entresol. Entropion. Entropy, entrust, and entry. And I'm going to pick entropy as the word of the episode because I think it is a very interesting topic. Entropy, entropy, entropy. Entropy, 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 entropy. Entropy is crazy stuff. Now I'm going to talk about a couple of movies that I watched because I enjoy doing that. I enjoy watching the movies and I enjoy talking about the movies. And I don't get to talk about the movies as much as I would like. Uh, let's see. Last Shift. This is a horror movie about a rookie police officer who has to go um, 
basically take the night shift of this old police station before it's going to be uh, taken out of commission the next day. And uh, she's got the last shift, and there's some crazy stuff that goes down. Um, and then I rewatched the Super Mario Brothers movie uh, on a recent flight for work. Um, and that is just, it's such a fun goofy movie with all of the nostalgia most of the nostalgia that you would want if you grew up with these games which i did of course and you know they they've they've opened it up so well for sequels and i cannot wait to see what they do it's just good fun good silly fun and um yes i thought it was just they just they just did a good job they did good job people thank you for super the super mario brothers movie that's the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening or watching. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.